another awesome episode of the School of Farmhouses podcast where we find dope people who are doing amazing things in the farming space. And today is not different. I've got a dear friend of mine. I'm talking about someone that is not just a farmer, but she's a hustler, an entrepreneur, a professional. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Sakani Mshonga to the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> How are you doing? Hey, hi, how are you? I'm all right, I'm all right. How have you been, friend? Sure. Do you want the short version uh, or the long nah, version? No, nah, no, nah. I want to know. Like, uh, last time I spoke to you, you were not okay. Yeah. You had an accident or something like that, you know? So, yeah. So we haven't been in touch. Yes, a lot has happened since we last saw each other. Um, yeah, I've been, sure, going through a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But nothing that we, we can't overcome, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I was in a slight accident, and that put me out of work for a little bit. Wow. You know, but um, I've recovered, and I'm still recovering. I'm doing physio, and yeah, everything is, is better now. I mean, I'm happy to see you alive, man. I, I, was, I, was, I, was, yeah, I was shocked. I was shocked <laughs> because I tried to get hold of you, and uh, I couldn't get through to you. You were not yeah. responding. You were... I couldn't even get messages through, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but um, if you're feeling good and if you're better, I'm glad. So okay. today we're gonna talk about your journey, right? We're gonna talk about Swatsakani farming. Uh -huh. I mean, I just wanna give a bit of a backstory of 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 how how I met you, and um, I remember I was doing. <laughs> I was busy with Farm Hustler Apparel. <laughs> I was about to launch the the, the, the brand. And yes. so I, I saw you, you know, I saw you and I, you know, I DM'd you. Yeah. And I say to you, hey, my name is Nkosi, yadi, 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 Farm Hustler Apparel. Can I send you, I think I sent you a link to the online store. Yeah. And I said, listen, please, I want to send you one sweater mm. on me. Just go and check the color that you like and check the size. Give me your address. I'll ship it to you. Mm. What surprised me was your response. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you say to me, okay, I want black. I think you said medium black. Yeah. But I also want to buy black large. I was yes. like, what? I wanted to give this person this thing as a gift and this person wants to buy off the bat. Yeah. So I was like... Okay, this is actually a very interesting person. So I, I was like, I started, I went through your page, you know, I Googled you there. Yeah. I was like, okay, she's not gonna, you know, she's not gonna win this one. So I say to you, I remember saying, what project, what product do you have at the moment? Because <laughs> I'm running a Shisanya on the other side. Uh, yeah. and then you, say, you gave me a list of your prize list. So I was like, okay, since she's gonna buy, let me also support her. Yeah. Which is, I noticed that you've got that spirit of, where does that come from? Yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, we're always preaching, I mean, in social spaces or just when people are talking, they're always talking about how we must support each other, the, yeah. you know, um, yeah. buy black, support local and so forth. So for me, I mean, I need to be an example for that. For me, it's just about leading by example. So wow. anyone that knows me that's come across me, they know that whenever I say I want to promote something of yours, I want to collaborate with you, I, the same way that I want to be treated as a professional, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will treat you the same way because yeah, yeah. that was your brand. Yeah. That was you introducing me to something that you're passionate about. Yeah, yeah. I needed to make sure that I'm buying into your brand wow. and I'm supporting that. Wow. Wow. Mm. Now, I appreciate that. that. That actually meant a lot to me. Yeah. Um, but anyway, let's let's dive deep in. Um, mm. I don't know, like, I, how did Swatsakani farming start? Like, let's really go to. In fact, before we do that, how do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> <laughs> before I forget. <laughs> okay, yeah. so Tsakani, right? Mm. Tsakani Mshongo is a farm girl born and bred in Limpopo and Zanin. And I literally have farming in my DNA because now I've become a second generation farmer. Awesome. And um, so my childhood was definitely just one of those people that was always in a farm space. So Tsakani is literally the farm girl who is also a serial entrepreneur, as you've already sure. mentioned. I'm sure. a serial entrepreneur yeah. 
who's also very passionate about not just farming, but philanthropy and um, so many other things that are about empowering myself and making sure that I empower the next person. Yeah. So that's who, in a nutshell, you can say Zakani is. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And who introduced, I mean, I know you're a second generation farmer, but did this come from your dad? Because I know your dad mm. was a farmer, right? Mm. Uh, I mean, may his soul rest in peace. Yes. Um, so would you say like this comes from your dad or from your, like your parents? Yes. So definitely I'd say it comes from both my parents and I, I took different things from both of them. So what you see now, the woman that you see now all put together and, yeah. you know, um, Joburg type looking, <laughs> not necessarily farm looking was an inspiration that I got from my mother when we were younger. So my mother's a school principal or was a school principal because she's retired now. Mm. And just growing up, I used to always watch her, you know, and it always amazed me or it fascinated me when I used to see this woman dressing so corporate in the yeah. morning and she's going to be a principal at a school and yeah. she's like commands respect and so forth. And then when she comes back in the afternoon, she changes and, and, and gets into uh, overalls into the and yeah. into the boots and yeah. she goes into the field yeah, yeah. and she's there with the, with the workers and she's just doing this thing. And I was like, wow, this is the first introduction of how a woman can do farming or to me, she was just like the superwoman. Do you know what I mean? And then it just, I took that from her that, you know what, you can be someone that can juggle all kinds of things at the yeah. same time. And yeah. my dad and her obviously collaborated together and that's where the passion for them started. Yeah. And I would see him just being a humanitarian in the community, how everybody just depended on him, like the families and the homes around us that didn't have food. They would always just come by and collect produce. You know, he was wow. always just feeding the, wow. like the community at large. Wow. So definitely both my parents just took that, uh, I mean, embedded that into me from a young that's age. That's where your giving comes from. <laughs> yes, that's exactly where everything comes from. I mean, from. yeah. So I, I noticed that, um, well, I, I read somewhere, uh, I think it was an interview that you did with some other publication that actually mm. you are renting a farm from your parents. Yeah. Why would you rent a farm from your parents? <laughs> I mean, it's your, it's your family farm. Why, why did you just say, hey, I want this piece. Let me just do my thing. So there's many aspects to it. Yeah. So like I said, I grew up on the farm and it belongs to my parents. Yes. So, and I'm the last one in the family. Yeah. Obviously, I have older siblings yeah. and, you know, yeah. I needed to make sure that everybody understands my independence I understand. and I wanted my parents not to fiddle too much into my business because okay. I was I wanted to build my you. business and yeah. me yeah, yeah, yeah. outside of their shadows outside of them being farmers and I said to them for you to take me seriously I have to rent it yeah. out I have to take it like how you've been operating in other years when you yeah. gave opportunities to, to other, other farmers or other people that came to rent because yeah. they would do that when yeah. we were growing up yeah. So I said, I have to have the same attitude and hopefully you can treat me yeah. like a, a customer as yeah, well, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, And it gave you independence. And it gave well. me that independence because I had to bring in my own workers. I, <laughs> you know, I had to go get my own equipment. Yeah. Like there was nothing that was handed down or in a civil platter yeah. for me that you would think a second generation farmer would, would be. The only thing that I got was just structures. Yeah, and I mean, talking of your workers, um, I've noticed that you've got a... a a, a wonderful relationship with your workers. You yeah. cross them from time to time. Yeah. I mean, most people, and I mean, no pun intended, I mean, like, I, 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 I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. Yeah. But a lot of farm workers don't get the respect that they deserve. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I noticed that you you treat your farm workers like, like you treat them the same way you, you treat a professional person. Yes. And I I, I want to know where that comes from and, you know, yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's just starting with the fact that you just recognize the next human as a human. As a human being, right? Let's start there. I mean, it uh, doesn't matter what kind of work they do. It doesn't matter the spaces you're in. You need to treat humans as human beings and you need to respect them. And you need to also recognize that the, while they're also working there, they're professions. 
That's they're what I wanted to say, actually. They're professionals so I have to respect in their own them. right. Yes, yeah, right? so I have to respect them. And honestly speaking, I learn a lot from them as well. Mm. They have more expertise to me, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And if they're happy, it makes my, my, my job easier, yeah, especially yeah. because of the fact that I'm always up and down, back and forth. Yeah. I'm totally relying on them to also work with the vision of what Swatakani is. Yeah. I'm, I'm relying on them to make sure that they treat the projects and everything that we're doing as their own babies, you know, and not just me. So I always say to them, like, you know, if, if I win, we're all winning. Yeah. You know, so I need to make sure that I take care of that relationship first. I mean, I love that. I love that. So, like, how involved are you in, in the day-to-day -day running of the farm? Very involved. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I just, yeah, because I've seen you. I've seen you push yeah. the barrels. I've seen you do your thing. <laughs> so, are you, like, a hands-on type of farm or are you an office type of farm? There's two different farmers. Look, I'm Remote both. Control farmers. No, no, no. <laughs> Unfortunately, because we, I do traditional farming. Yeah. There is no, you know, equipment like technical yeah. stuff or like uh, anything yeah. technology-wise. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. The best that we do is walkie-talkies when yeah. we're on the yeah. <laughs> we're on yeah. the ground. Yeah. But um, I am a hands-on farmer in the sense that even if I'm not in the vicinity. Yeah. We are literally talking through yeah. every step. Yeah. So, like, when I'm in Johannesburg, for example, I literally wake up an hour before my, what I would normally do, yeah. just so that I can have a call in with the farm and we go through what's going to happen throughout the day, yes. step by step. And if they have issues, you know, the kind of relationship with, that we have, yeah. they will definitely text me or we're calling each other and we're discussing, hey, what's going on? This and this just happened. We just found this. What should we do? How do we handle this? Yeah. You know? And they like engaging me on things. I don't know why, but they'll call me just for the slightest of things. Yeah. And I'm happy with that because at least it means they keep me involved as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. And I mean, last time when we met, I remember you used to, because I, I mean, you also have a professional nine to five job that you do, right? Yes. But you used to spend two weeks this side and two weeks in Zanin. Do you still do that? <sighs> No, so eh, this year has literally just humbled me, the yeah. beginning of this year. Yeah. So I think last year, because with the loss of my dad, yeah. um, I found myself just literally being thrown in the deep end. So oh, my yeah. dad was like a manager as well for me, which made it easy for me to be able to be the, in Johannesburg and then, yes. you know, because he would also assist me. But with, with, with his loss... Um, now, I literally had to do everything by myself. I hadn't employed a manager by then. Yeah. It was just the staff. Mm -hmm. And then um, this made it very difficult, very you know. And then in the yeah. beginning of the year, my body shut down. Wow. My body shut down wow. because I, I think also just with everything hitting me as well, like um, just the loss as well of my father, because we were very close. Like we were Can best we friends. Can dead for a moment, actually? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you you strike me like a dearest girl. I am. <laughs> like I am. How was how would you say like Ubabumshongo? What type of man was he? Sure, he had a big personality, yeah. larger than life. Opposite of me though, yeah. but um, so and he was an astounding community member. There was nothing that he didn't do. Yeah. I mean, from before he became a farmer, he was a man that was, uh, you know, in. In the old government, which was called yeah. Gazangul, he was yeah. a police minister, okay. he was a teacher, he oh, was wow. a professor. Like, oh, wow. he was just someone that always, and I think that's where I get the spirit of just being a serial entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was always just doing something different and just mm. pushing the boundaries and yeah. the envelopes. So um, I got a lot of that from him, the hustling spirit and, and whatnot. And that was, we were very close. Yeah. So... When when he passed, literally on the week, let's say we were burying him like on the Friday, mm. I literally received uh, chickens and oh. like everything, like we had put orders yeah. in place. So I, I, we received chickens and we were receiving our seedlings all at one time. So while people, while we were busy planning his funeral, we were also planning how to receive, mm. you know, our stock, yeah, how to receive stuff, yeah. all the things that are happening on the farm. It, it was a lot. So it's I just too much. Yeah, 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 so I didn't get a time to, to even grieve him and yeah, have yeah, that yeah. moment to yeah. just process. And I knew that I didn't, I couldn't fail him. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. And there was no time to break down. So literally the rest of the year, I was just working. You were just pushing yourself. Just pushing. And your body shut down. Trying to make this man yeah. proud. <laughs> He's and then, proud. He's yes. Proud. And then my body shut down yeah. in the beginning of this year. Yeah, yeah. Well, well. Um, I think we need to normalize, you know, taking time off mm. as farmers as well. Yeah. Know, because we, we, work, we work hard. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I want to get on to the next question, which is... Um, what do you really, what does Swatakani specialize in, in terms of in the farming space? Okay, so it's crop farming, crop mixed farming. crop farming and, um, well, seasonal crop farming and broilers, broilers. at the moment. Okay, okay. Yeah, so uh, broiler farming, I mean, broiler and farming is one of the big yeah, things yeah. that we do there yeah. at the farm, if you've seen from my pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I mostly specialize on those two. Okay. while trying to learn other things. So you'll see on the farm there's also pigs, pigs yes. and whatnot. But that's because I'm trying to understand how they can coexist yes. in the same space yes. because, yes. you know, they always say that you can't have, you know, mixed farming. With mixed farming, you can't have certain uh, animals with certain animals or next yeah. to certain things. Yeah. So I'm still just trying to learn and understand in my space, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. in my space, how can I balance? So I'm not into piggery as yet. Yeah, I had yeah. said to you that that's something I'm going to learn from you. You should get my ebook. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. So I'm just yeah. learning, yeah. yeah. What's happening, farm hustlers? Listen, guys, do you guys know that pig farming is a very lucrative industry? I'm talking from experience, guys. I've been farming with pigs for quite some time now to know a thing or two. However, I've lost money. I've made my mistakes. So what I want to do today is I want you guys to avoid the pitfalls that I went through. So what I went on and did is I created an ebook from scratch that's called the six reasons why you should get into pig farming and how to go about it. So if you're interested in this ebook, make sure that you're going to WhatsApp pig farming to the number on the screen. Let's go back to the episode. So tell me, like, how do you balance your professional job and your business? Because, I mean, I... I I think, uh, look, maybe you want to tell me a bit about your job, but I, I'd like to think that it's also demanding. 100%. Yeah. So I wish I could say that I've figured it out and yeah. that I've balanced it, but I try to just manage my time as yeah. best as I can. Yeah. Um, now with, you know, COVID and the, 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 the rules around it being relaxed and everything, I'm obviously now required to be back in office full time. <laughs> so yeah. that luxury that I had where I could be home and be able to do things yeah. is no longer there. It's no longer there. Yeah. So I find myself obviously having to work longer hours. So after work, then I, that's when I'm, I'm busy trying to do my other work yeah. and just mostly doing a lot of the working in, in the weekends. Then I'll drive, I'll drive to Limpopo yeah. like on a Friday yeah. after work. Yeah. And then I'm there at the farm and I'm doing that. And then I'm driving back. Sunday. Sunday, sometimes on Monday mornings. Sunday, Monday, Monday. <laughs> yeah, so, but I'm just always, um, I don't know, I'm always on the go. Yeah. And I think that's what I'm trying to slow down because I saw the effects of it last year. Yeah. Uh, as much as it gave me amazing results at the farm and whatnot, but personally on my physical self it, yeah. it took you know it a toll a lot yeah it yes. was a lot. so i'm avoiding that and i'm trying to work on just making yeah. other avenues yeah yes let's talk about um so i want to get into crop farming yeah myself right and i think there was a time i asked you on twitter i was like what crops can i plant in winter i think it was winter yeah i can't remember but you, you did tell me mm. so like what would you say is your favorite crop like the cash cow. <laughs> so for me, it has been chilies. Chilies, right? Yes. Chilies has been that baby that just keeps on giving. Yeah. Funny enough, also tomatoes, although they are very challenging, but if you get it right, yeah. you, you'll be fine. Like you can make good yieldings and, and good results in monetary wise yeah. when it comes to tomatoes. I think I made one of actually... Yeah. Uh, my best results with tomatoes last year as well. I saw I saw the heap of tomatoes there. Yes, not just with the yield, but money-wise. I don't know if you remember last year, there was this time when there was just a shortage of tomatoes and the price just yeah, peaked. Spiked, yeah. Yes, it yeah. spiked. And in that time, we were making a killing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah because uh, unfortunately, there was also flooding back in, in Limpopo at yeah, the time. Yeah. And 
I think our competitors, I don't know if I should mention them, but one of the biggest uh, farming I people, that are, are. you know who they are, they have like <laughs> yeah. a yellow branding yeah, and a, I know them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and a red something, yeah, a green something. Yeah, yeah. So those guys, they unfortunately um, lost a lot of, of yeah. their tomato. They, yeah. they, their tomatoes actually flooded. Yeah. And when they flooded, ours were fine. Yeah. We still had, so yeah. everybody or most of their customers wow were flooding to our farm oh, now and oh. we had like packies lining up early in the oh, morning just oh. to get our produce. So ah, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. No, that's very interesting. So you you prefer chilies, right? Yes. Okay. Because chilies is an all round I, I mean who buys chilies? Everybody. Everybody. Well, but mostly the market is Yeah, I wanna from KZN. I wanna know about the market So you push them that far? Well, they go to the the Joburg market, oh, so you and take then them some. To the market, right? I, I take them to the yeah, Joburg I've seen market. You with, uh, in fact, I think when you brought me the produce that you brought me, there yes. was chilies like a bag like this. Yeah. And and I must say your 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 your, your quality is top notch. Like yeah. your carrots, like everything that you brought in here was just. Um, oh, so mm. you take them to to the market. Yes. Yeah, so from from in Zanin or Limpopo, we yeah. use trucks yes. that transport them to the Joburg market. Yes. And at the market, then we have obviously uh, contacts or agents that then sell for us. And it seems like a lot of people from KZN seem to like chilies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> so <laughs> I really say why. But funny enough, even locally, I don't know if you've yeah. seen that a lot of the time in my car, I have chilies bags just lingering in my car because... Yeah. When people see me, they just always like chilies, chilies, yeah, and I yeah. literally started doing like yeah. driving to people's homes yeah. and actually giving them or like selling. Yeah. But that's yeah, not yeah. so. Like of, with the wall market situation, how how like how do you get to supply the market? Is, everyone is, is open a, to supply the market. Okay, so it's a straightforward situation. So you know. I think this is something, obviously, like what you're saying, that I think people just need to be educated about the market. The market is, the Joburg market is open to anyone and every farmer, you know. You don't need anything special. No connections. No, you don't. What you need to do is just literally go online and look through the Johannesburg uh, market and look at the different agents. So there's different companies. The trick is just to find one that will not... Uh, abuse you in terms of price yes okay so you find you find a market that or a company that you feel can represent you and your produce and you and you establish relationship you call them you say hey my name is this person and this person uh, my company is this i've got chilies is, how much is chilies going for at the moment yes. They'll tell you the price because there's a daily price that's happening because it fluctuates, obviously, daily. They'll tell you chilies at the moment at 3 kg is costing 45 rands. Okay. And you go, okay, cool. That's something I can work with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending on where you are, obviously, because yes. you need to consider transportation, transportation and so forth. Then you obviously then send it through with the transportation. You address it because of the agent yeah, that yeah. you've chosen. Yeah, yeah. And agents are not picky. They will just receive anything that's fresh. Okay. okay. I mean, I used nice. to think it's a complicated, no. you must be a big farmer no, type of situation. Not even. Yeah. Okay. And then you just send it to them. And then they, and then the relationship that the agent will have with you is that they'll tell you daily. They'll give you like a report daily. So obviously you haven't, you have exchanged all your information and contacts okay. and so forth. They'll send you a report daily to say, today we sold of the hundred that you, you sent to us today, we sold 40. And 40 of those, we sold at 45 rands. So they do a breakdown daily. Wow. And then when you're done, (laughs) they send it to you. Wow, 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 wow. And then they send you your money once everything has been sold. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I'm sure there's a lot of people that will find this interesting as well because, I mean, we end up trying to sell in the streets and all of those things because we think we don't fit in the market. So I think the challenge is that... Obviously, just like you, the agents are entrepreneurs. Yes. They want to make money. And obviously, yes. you do the, all the hard work of, yeah. you know, obviously growing all these produce and whatnot. But yeah. when it gets there, some are very dodgy. What they will do is they will tell you something sold at 45 rands when oh, actually okay. they sold it at 65. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they're taking your money. So people like me, I'd like to be streetwise. You know? <laughs> so what I do is, I go undercover. You go there. I go to the market. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's sure. something that I do. Yeah. If I know that I've sent a big deal of produce, I will wake up on, and, and markets open and close quite early. Eh? Yeah. It opens at five o'clock, yeah. the Joba market, yeah. and then it, it closes by 11 okay. in the morning. Okay. So I will wake up at five and I'm there at the market and I'm walking around and I go to my agent. 
because they don't know they me. Don't they know just you. think yes, I'm yes, yes. this is farmer in Limpopo That's who doesn't know smart. Joburg. That's actually smart. And yeah. I go and I ask them, so how much is this going for? And I go, okay, they tell me whatever, whatever. Yeah. I wait for the results. Yeah. When they send me that email later on, I'm literally just watching, thinking, but my guy. Yeah. <laughs> you said. You know. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I mean, so um, in terms of like chilies, right? Is it a seasonal product? No, like I said, it's an, an all round. Okay. So like all you, year you round. plant chilies all Yeah, so all chilies is a very friendly, <laughs> I don't know, I should, plant. I should, I should it, actually. Um, it doesn't stop. And it yields, eh? Once, if you get it right and you, like, give it enough yeah. nutrition, okay. it will yield for you. Okay. Yeah. And and is it the green one or the red one? Or, it, or the green one turns red? The green one turns red. That's uh, Chisa. Okay. Chisa would turn red uh, after some time okay. if you don't pick it from yeah. your, your plant. No, yeah. Interesting. It looks like I'm going to be doing chillas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, um... The next segment, eh? mm-hmm. I want to talk about, I think this is one of the things that I noticed you were yeah. doing the first time I met you. Yes. Branding. Mm. Like the importance of branding in farming. I mean, yeah. why, why are you branding yourself? I mean, your employees are well branded. Mm. Your produce, like you always rocking your brand every time, I, you know, like... Jay, like even your Instagram posts are branded. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's all deliberate because, okay. um, I mean, I don't, it's just difficult, obviously, because I'm the only one I'm, yeah. that's running the business. But yeah. I don't necessarily want to be the face, but I want you to know the brand. That's what's up. Same way, I mean, we don't know who, I mean, who the owners of Mercedes are, unless you Google. Yeah, yeah. But you know when you see Mercedes. Yeah. Just when you see the brand, you know who it is. So that. that's what I'm building. I want for people to know my brand before they even see my face. I love that. Because it'll confuse them anyway, my face. Because one day I'm like this, one day I'm at the yeah, farm. Yeah, you don't, you don't you look know what like I mean? a, You don't look like a, and, and that's what I like <laughs> about... Um, the, the you 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 and um, other farmers that I've I've spoken to as well yeah. is like you you don't look like a farmer but that doesn't your looks doesn't they don't yeah. mean that you're not a farmer you yeah. know what I'm saying because farmers have to look in a certain way they have to dress in a certain way they can't rock lashes and yeah. stuff and <laughs> so I actually love that yeah but I already told you earlier that yeah. um, my mom. Yes. already growing up yes. i saw that picture from, yes. from her that you can do both and you that's can, a beautiful balance yes you can be a corporate girl and yeah. still be a farm girl yeah, that's a, you don't need to choose that's a beautiful balance that's yeah. a beautiful balance okay so that's the power of branding and yeah. then networking as well you network, networking as well is one one of the things that i've seen you do as well i mean mm. I, i'm asking those questions because I, I want to start getting into um, networking with a lot of farmers as well. And um, we're also going to come up with another program as well for other farmers that are looking for for um, seminars and stuff like that. Yeah. But I noticed that you do that a lot. And one would think that you already know your stuff. You already have your farm. You know A to Z, but you still network. No, you can never know enough. Whoever yeah. claims to know yeah. every conversation or every topic, you must be worried about that person. Yeah, you can. Uh, we are in human beings, and human beings learn daily. There's there's something that you can learn from someone, and also just because I'm an expert or in in crop farming or just in farming, yeah. the space of farming, yeah. I'm not an expert in uh, podcasting. Yes, I'm not an expert, so I need to have conversations with podcasters and anyone else that's out there that's doing that. something different from me, so that, that I can learn because you never know what spaces you'll find yourself in. Yeah. And it's best to go into a space prepared and yeah. knowing what you, the kind of space that you're going to. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Of course. <laughs> so I'm always trying to find opportunities. Yeah. So learning for me gives me that uh, that space to, you know, to go into different kinds of opportunities. You have to go out there and mingle with Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, I love that. I love that. I love that. So, um... I know that you've got a channel that you started as well, ne? Yes. but we're going to talk about that in a minute. I want us to okay. do a, actually um, a quick trivia game, okay? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, so I'm going to I'm going to ask you I'm going to ask you a question. In fact, I'm going to ask something, ne? Yeah. You either going to say you're going to give me the answer. You can't say both and you can't say pass. Huh. So I need an answer, okay? Okay. <laughs> so let me just uh, Got to it real quick. Oh my goodness. 
Um, so, yeah, here we are. So I need to pick one. You just pick one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, but I think I think some of them are gonna be easy for I, you because I, uh, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just want it to be easy for 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 the viewers to understand the type of person that you are, right? Okay. Okay, let's go. Crops or livestock? Crop. <laughs> okay, obviously. Fertilizer or manure? Manure. Manure, really? Yes. <laughs> you don't put fertilizer on those. On the, on Remember, the, I have chickens. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I heard that and chicken manure is very yes, good. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's got the best nitrogen. A lot of nitrogen in there. Yeah. Yep. Tomatoes or chilies? Uh, it's obvious. <laughs> okay, chilies, but like you're making it hard. Yeah. I just said tomatoes, tomatoes chilies. and chilies. No, you okay, can't. Okay, <laughs> chilies, chilies. If you, if you, yeah, okay, chilies, chilies, right? Yeah. Okay, carrots or peppers? Peppers. Okay. Yeah. Jeep or Land Cruiser? Oh. Jeep or Land Cruiser? <laughs> yeah. Jeep. Jeep, obviously. <laughs> okay. Okay. Pigs or broilers? Broilers. Okay. I understand them better. You understand them better, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, winter or summer? Summer. Your summer. Winter. Okay. <laughs> winter, everything dies. Yeah, like everything it's dies. It's very difficult to grow crop. Well, obviously, you need to grow crops that grow in winter yeah. because you can't have anything that's growing outward or outward. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I get it. Anyway, um, so I want to talk about your channel, right? Yes. Because you started a channel and um, uh, uh, like you trying to plug people or you're plugging people, not that you're trying. You're already plugging people. Yeah. So I want to understand the inspiration behind it and the the wall... Um, the, the plan, yeah. So it was like an, I wouldn't say an accidental thing, but on my journey of just farming, I've met a lot of amazing people. Yes. Like with my chilies business. Yes. Um, when I provide the chilies to people, I've realized that some of them make uh, uh, Sauce. chili sauces. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Nice. And for me, that I was like, wow, this is nice. I mean, I'm not, I don't necessarily consume chilies, but I, was, I would then do like the thing that I normally do is even though I was providing them with the chilies, I would then buy bottles to also why to support their business. I love that. So I would buy the bottles. And for me, I was like, okay, I need to also feel, I feel like I need to also share this with other people. And plug nice. them to this yeah, produce yeah, yeah. or to this product that yeah. this person has, yeah. you know, made with my chilies. So I started thinking, how can I go about that? You know, I, I want a platform where obviously I'm on my platform. I'm mostly just talking about um, just like uh, crop and, 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 yeah. and farm stuff. Yeah. But I want a platform where I can just promote and plug other entrepreneurs. people, entrepreneurs yeah, yeah, yeah. that are doing amazing things and creating different things from different things. It doesn't necessarily need to be on a farming yes, perspective, yes, but yeah. it can be apparel. It yeah. can be, you know, uh, and, and in farming, I found that so many people are making something that people are making jam, people yeah. are making all kinds of things, yeah, yeah, yeah. bags, you yeah. know, from obviously kettle yeah. and whatnot. So I thought these people don't have a platform or spaces where people are telling people that these people are actually making it from raw yeah. product from a farmer or from someone who's just creatively thought of a way of making this thing. Mm. I need to tell people about them. I so I thought, it. let me yeah. start something that's no, plugging that. you and I. I love that. I love that. To this person. I mean, make sure you uh, check out a channel. Uh, yes. Uh, what, what is it called, by the way? It's called Swatsakani's Plug with Sakani. Swatsakani's Plug with Sakani on YouTube. Um, yeah. uh, and just check it out and subscribe. Uh, she's going to plug you. Yes, <laughs> definitely. So, Sakani, uh, just before we wrap up, uh, we're going to wrap up soon. Um, yeah. There's someone somewhere who aspires to be in your position, right? Mm -hmm. Especially uh, females. Yes. I noticed that a lot of females... And now, you know, they're trying to get into entrepreneurship and into farming and, and I love it. Mm. Um, but we sometimes look up to certain people, but we don't, we, we don't, we don't like, um, we don't get to talk to them or yeah. meet them or they're, they're just out of our reach, right? Mm. What would you say to someone who aspires to be you? They're looking at you, they're like, I'd like to do what she's doing. Mm. And yeah, what would you say? You know, I'm such a reachable person. <laughs> I'd I like to that. think yeah. uh, I'm such a reachable person. I've I've always advocated for people to go into my DMs, and if I if I can help, I'll definitely 
um, help you. Most yeah. people will tell you. I respond to no, DMs. No, you're very reachable. Um, I will respond I to DMs and that. share whatever knowledge that I can share. Yeah. It's not, and I always remind people, I'm also no expert, but I will share from my own experiences and what has worked for me. Yeah. You know, so I always say to people that want to, well, aspire to be me, that don't be scared to ask people, you know. But the only thing I always advise people that want to ask, yeah. and I think I should just put that out there, when you approach someone who you think is going to assist you in your future, please don't go there unprepared. Okay. You know, if you want mentorship, please don't go there unprepared. First of all, research the person that you are approaching. Who is Zakani? Mm. What kind of work and what kind of farming does Zakani do? Because mm. I'll get DMs and questions. Literally this morning, I responded to an email. Someone said, I want to, I'm a farmer. I have kettle. I want to get into kettle farming and whatnot. And I want funding and whatnot. If you have been or following my story in any way, in any platform or any publication, for starters, you'll know that I don't have funding. Yeah. So I don't know where you get funding. Don't ask me where you get funding. I love that. Um, and then secondly, I don't do cattle. I don't do sheep. I don't do whatnot. So why are you asking me? Yeah. Ask like research a farmer. And there's so many of them on Twitter and yeah. YouTube and whatnot. Who specializes yes, in who that. Who specializes in that area. And it'll speak more to you than I would be able to advise you on anything. So take your time. Explore who's out there. Research about them and know the kind of questions that you want to ask. You can't just give a general question and say, I want to get into farming. Where do I start? Have you tried Google? <laughs> you know? I love that. Yes, but we will definitely assist you if you come with a plan, if you come with an idea. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. uh, 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 you've dropped a lot of gems already um, on this episode. And um, personally, you you are my go to person. I always ask, especially when it comes to crop farming. Hey, it's like any, you know, this crop, that crop. Um, do you think like uh, like a mentorship program is something on the cards for you in the future, maybe? With my time, honestly speaking, I don't have time to do the kind of mentorship I would love to do. Yeah. But I do do mentorship. Okay. Um. So I literally am. Um, mentoring three students At so i take on as much people or little people as that can. i can yeah, yeah, yeah. within my capacity I love that. so and and my mentorship goes beyond just teaching you about what farming is about i literally educate these people yeah, so yeah. i pay for their school fees as well wow so that's within my little means wow, wow so i wow, i wow. take them to school yes at the same time i'm also what sharing the information they work on things with me on the farm yeah. and I tell them about my farm and yeah. they visit the farm. Yes. Yeah, and they school Hands-on experience. Yes, yeah. and they school breaks, they visit the farm and so forth. I love that. But it's people also well from my community. Yes. People expect me I to mean, you should, you should just pick charity up from begins the at home. To Heinesberg, which I can't. I mean, charity begins at home. So I love yeah. what you're doing. You're doing what you're doing from where you are with what you can. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I mean, in conclusion, um, it's been a great uh, episode. Um, Thank you. Where do you see Swatakan Farming in the next five years? Listen, I see Swatakan Farming as that brand that you identify when you see Swatakan's brand. I love it. Yeah. I, love I don't it. even need to introduce myself. Yeah. I see the brand speaking for me in spaces before I get there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Which is already speaking. I mean, if you look at people that have i've seen how many people have interviewed it means you're already doing something that's not worthy you know what i'm saying so so yeah um i'd like to look back in five years and say so i mean uh, Takani said this <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i mean that's what's up anyway guys uh that's a, that has been another awesome episode of the school of farm hustlers podcast make sure you subscribe like and share yeah. until next week let's get it